Hi, this is a XGen tutorial for Maya, a quick start. I'm going to quickly run through how I created hair setups for character renders such as this. So you can see we've got XGen hair, hair on the clothes and this coat bit and then his moustache, beard and eyebrows. So I'm going to show you the process that I did for that and just it's just um, it's not an in-depth look, it's just what I needed to know to do that, that sort of render. And there will be timestamps in the description and also if you want to download this scene you can do, there will be a link or if you're a Patreon you get access to this scene as well as other ones that will um, from previous tutorials, they're all on the Patreon page when you become a member. Also if you sign up to the Patreon there's also a Discord group which I'm a member of so if you have any random questions you can always post them there as well. So in this scene let's quickly take a look, so we've got this lady's head and we've got the main geometry which is these bits so I just isolate them so you've got the eyes and the head so they're the render render uh, sorry I can't talk renderable geometry and then if I hide these then all these ones on the outliner on the left hand side that have the word xgen these are basically elements that I've separated from the model and what we can do is we can actually use them as basically emitters of the groom or areas to place collections and so that, that might not fully make sense but I will show you now so I'll turn this back on let's start with the head so for XGen you might need to load the plugin for it so you go to Windows general editors and oh wait no it's um, settings of preference plugin manager and if you scroll down the like it should be loaded automatically for me it always has been but um, somewhere down there there's like xgen toolkit and yeah and so you've got an xgen tab here and you can load the xgen window at the side I think if you go to um, hold down spacebar and then find the xgen tab somewhere in here can't see it there's, there's way too many options in the software anyway you load the XGen tab and you select your XGen geometry, like the hair, hair geometry. The reason why I've isolated this is just so I can control each patch easier. Rather than if I just selected the whole head, then I would have to create um, a lot more masks. So it would be a lot more painful, to be fair. Um, okay, so I'll select this head XGen Geo and click Create New Description. So I'm going to call it head hair underscore desc for description and then create a new collection. So I've just got head hair underscore col. We want splines and then randomly across the surface and then placing using guides. So this is like the default that I would use for hair and eyelashes and things. Uh, the only time I've used anything different was. I think just for it was for uh, on this render the clothing that's just random across the surface and here so I don't think I used guides I think I just used um, or maybe maybe I did um, I can't fully remember but I'll work it out but um, but yeah it's just random placement Anyway, let's click create and to place a guide, what we need to do, so at the moment you can see nothing's happened. So a few things we should do at the start is we could change the density, let's put that up, this is going to be the density of the amount of hairs when we start placing guides. And then the width, we can reduce that, although maybe I should put down a guide first. So if you want to put down a guide first, you click that button, you click there. And then you can scale it up and then in if you hover over an empty space you can click guide control points and you'll see we've got four which isn't very many because this hair we ideally want to go like back behind her head something like that so four points is not really enough like it's already being stretched so what we can do is i'll just spread these out a bit more 
and I'm going to go, hold right click, go to object mode again, select this guide, and on this right hand side, go to rebuild, and so it says five, So, but the amount of CV points we had was about four. So let's say 12. Type in 12 and you can see that the curve is now smoother. And then when I hold down right click, go to guide control points, I've got a lot more points there. It's pretty cool. There is another dynamic way of moving this curve as well. If you find this button up here in the XGen shelf called Sculpt Guides, and you click that, you will see we get this brush. If you hold down B and use middle mouse, then you can change the, the width of your brush as well. But it's fairly dynamic. I mean, it's not amazing though, because when you're, look, when you're moving from a side, um, then sometimes it's moving in the other axis as well, like on the x-axis. So it's moved slightly to the right-hand side when I was just trying to move it up. So that's the pros and cons. Um, so yeah, you can either do it manually or use that sculpt brush. You can select a guide point and then press B and change your blend um, radius as well. So you can actually use that in a similar way to the sculpting tool, which is pretty cool. Okay, let's just do that. And I'll just shape these a little bit. I think this curve would need to be a bit longer. So I, should, I could have scaled it up actually from the root. Um, let's press preview and see what happens. Okay, so nothing has happened so far. So there's probably not enough guides there. So let's quickly put down another one. Um, in fact, I'm gonna hide the head because it's too distracting. So let's put down another guide. Whoops. There we go. Oh, it looks like I put down a guide down there. I'm just going to delete that guide. Okay, so this one, um, so I'm going to scale it up and then do a rebuild, type 12 in, and just quickly try and shift it behind the back of the head. God, this is terrible. I'm just trying to make this as quick as possible. Right, okay. <laughs> so that's not good. But now, when I press preview, now that we've got two guides in, you can see we've, we've start to see something happening. And to get a more realistic um, flow of them as well, you can change the modifier CV count. So if I put that to 10, so we've got more uh, iterations in the in the curves. Um, in the width, the width is too wide at the moment, so let's change this down. Let's re reduce this to 0 0.1. And the taper as well, let's move that to like 0 0.8. So this just thins out the hair strands as well, so they get thinner towards the end. Also, in, to improve what we see in the viewport, we can press this button, which is multi-sample anti-aliasing. So you press that, unless your computer sucks. If your computer sucks, that might just crash your computer. Um, okay, so yeah, so we've got that. And so what, what you would do is you would add in a lot more curves, like you would add in, I would add another one there to go around the ear, and then I would add in some here, these lower bits, and then another one on the other side, and then I'd, I'd take it from there. Then once you've done that, you go to modifiers. Generally speaking, for standard hair, I would just add <coughs> clumping. Go to setup maps, just hit generate. That generates clump points. Press save. And now it's added clumping. And now we can control it using this curve as well. So you've got the root and tip. So you can basically tell where you want the clumping to occur and not occur. So you can see it's a linear, like down. So we have more clumping at the tips on this one. So that's before and after. 
And then we can add another layer of clumping as well. So we've got two clumpings now. And then set up maps and then generate, press save. Let my think. Okie dokie. And yeah, as we did before, we can, we can just change some of these settings. Um, and then what else have you got? Um, there is noise as well. So then that is like the extra final one. And within noise, we've got a few things. You've got frequency. So that's the, um, it's how frequent the noise pattern will occur. So you can increase that. So the more you increase that, uh, the more noise will be apparent. But then that's also controlled by the magnitude. So you'd also have to put the magnitude up a bit as well. But the higher the magnitude, the more random strands of hair you will get. And then you can use the magnitude scale and you've got root and tip. The only other thing in the modifiers that I've used before was, I think, coils. And that I used for the clothing in that character render. So for this um, sheep skin bit, that's mainly coils. Um, noise and coils and maybe a bit of clumping and the same for the very tiny hair which is on the clothing that was clumping coiling as well okay so let's say we're happy with the heads that obviously looks amazing then what we could do if we want full controllability um, then we can create another collection for the you know eyebrows separately and you know the eyelashes as well so we'll just do that one by one so I would do the same process I would select that object and then I would go to descriptions create description and then call it what is this eyebrow underscore r underscore description and then create a new collection I'm just creating a, a new collection just so it's all separated and then place and shaping guides so I click OK, and then I repeat the same process. So I will put down some guides like that. There we go. And then as you can see, we start to get something happening. So just change the width. Um, in this instance, I think it would be good to actually thin this down, this um, eyebrow because then there's a thinner surface area for the um, for the spines to actually come off. So I'm just loosely doing this. Whoops, there we go. <laughs> okay, so yeah, basically you would just have to thin thin this piece of geometry down to get less um, less spines in that area um, but then everything else I would probably just change to be the same as well like the tapering to 0 0.8 and then taper start to 0 0.8 as well um, something else we'd need to change would also be in the preview and output section for all your collections so you have to do this for all of them and you need to go down to renderer and then click Arnold Renderer, assuming you're using that. But if you've got other renderers installed, for example, I've got Redshift installed, then it should pop up as an option. But if you don't do that, you won't get proper renders. Like the renders won't work. And also you need to go... Um, for each collection, you need to go to File, Export Patches for Batch Render. You click that, and if your character is animated or it's on a turntable, then click that, and then do the type in the frame range, um, and then just click export file. So you need to do that and change Arnold Render before anything will actually properly show up, because if stuff shows up, then it, it won't be accurate. It'll just be some weird guesstimated version. Okay, another aspect of Xgen to quickly talk about is I'm going to do it on this sphere just because there's it's a, a bit more of a easy basic shape. Um, okay, so I'm quickly going to make some 
UVs for this because if you want to do any maps your hair geometry needs to have UVs. Um, so let's create a description for this. Let's call it sphere underscore des. Can't spell sphere. And then create a new collection sphere underscore collection. And yep, place guides. So let's put down some guides. Amazing. Okay, let's preview. So yeah, that's brilliant. Let's put density up to 50. Okay, so there is something called density mask and what this could be useful for is if we want to shave off a certain area of hair, basically. So if you think about it, like with, with a head, um, where there would be a fade off or, or like a line where the hair would stop growing from. This is a way in which you could control it. So what you want to do is on the right hand side go to the mask area below density and, and click on the arrow and click create map and then rename this. So I'm going to just call it sphere density mask and then this map resolution that's in p-text so it's not um, it's not normal resolution so the default would be 5 um, but you might want to bring that up like if you're doing a very detailed paint job and the start color is white so white is basically on black is off and then gray is 0 0.5 which is 50 50 basically so if we turn it on um, sorry if we have it on white then we'll see stuff there straight away and then we change the color to black. Um, by the way, you need to have a legacy material like a Lamba on your um, object for this to work, like for you to be able to see this. So as you can see now, I can dynamically paint onto my sphere. It's just loosely doing that. And then I click save. And as you can see, it has just updated it to there. You can also load in brushes um, from Maya. So there's the load, um, this load folder. And in fact, I already loaded one in, but it was is one that's already built into Maya. But if I just show you, so I'll change the color to white and then I'll click on this button, which is paintable texture. As you can see, now I'm using this sandy brush to do the fade off a bit more because it's a bit more natural in comparison to a flat brush. And then I'll press save. And as you can see, there's a bit more variation there as well. And if you want to blend it a bit more, then you would just change the color to a bit of a mid gray as well. So you get a bit more 50-50. Press save again. There we go. Let's put up the density as well. Beautiful. Cool. So another thing you can do is it's similarly, you've got a region mask. And this is if you basically want to um, part hair, you can you can use it for that. Um, so you would go create map, click on the drop down. Um, in the start color, you've got red, green, and blue, and these are basically different regions. So if you if you just want a center parting in here, you would only need like two colors. So you could start with the red, click create, and then go to color, and then pick the green default color. And you could just, okay, I'm gonna hide the hair, do clear extend preview, just so I can see what I'm doing. and then hit save and then I need to turn on the region mask because it's on zero put one and can you see that so now not only do we have the density mask but we've also got this separation of the hair and I've not even done anything with the CV curve so that's pretty cool so if you imagine if I actually 
um, you know, altered these curves to make them a bit more natural and curve either side, and then added in my modifiers on top, then we would get quite a nice centre parting, you know, more natural as well. So yeah, that was pretty much it. Um, that was a super, super duper quick X Gen for my tutorial. As I said at the start of the video, like I'm not a grooming expert, but this is what I did to create character renders such as this one. And hopefully that's of use. Uh, if you want any further questions or you want to request any tutorials, you can sign up to patreon.com forward slash raycast and you could be added into a Discord group to ask questions. You can download the file in the link below. And yeah, have a great day. There is one final aspect I forgot to mention when it comes to rendering hair. What you need to do is apply a shader to it and you want to apply this to the description for each of your hair objects. Um, sorry, for each of your descriptions you need to apply a shader. It could be the same one or it could be different ones. So for example this hair description there, I'll select the hair hold down right click, go to assign new material and because I'm rendering with Arnold I'll go to the Arnold tab and you see there's an AI standard hair and so that's just made my hair black for that and so here I can click on it and there are presets available so I can literally just pick blonde and then I can change this to head hair underscore matte, matte for material and yeah um, so now this should render, assuming I've done the other steps that I mentioned before, where you go to preview slash output, you change the renderer to Arnold, and then go file, um, export patches for batch render, press export file, if you've got an animated character or turntable, then press that and put in your frame range. Click export file, and then when I hit render, then it will render out, and that's it, that's all you need.